All right, guys, we got a video here. We're all LGBTQ according to TikTok. Ooh, which is weird because uh, if you try to identify straight as part of it, you get yelled at. Okay, well, I don't know why you can't just throw straight in there. I mean, we're oppressed too. <laughs> you know, it's it's horrible. Imagine being attracted to women. That's a mental disorder. Okay, but unfortunately, I have it. <laughs> anyway. Let's get into this. The one thing I will say before that is I think that we all have like the capacity to be a little uh, what we call in the medical field suspicious, like a character from Among Us. All jokes aside, this is kind of how I look at it. I always look at it as like a spectrum um, where, you know, you have your spectrum here. Well, I guess you, you would you can't really go on infinitely because, you know, you can only be so gay are so straight so you got your straight and then you got your gay and then i'd say like here is your bisexual and then you got like a whole spectrum here right <laughs> i think that generally speaking people are born somewhere on here so like for instance me i was probably born uh like maybe like right here right and based on societal conditioning you know you might you have like a, a general sphere right so that's why i'm i'm not to I'm not against femboys because like I wasn't like conditioned in a way where it was like you know be uh, being afraid to be gay. You know you still are a little bit afraid. I did have a family member say that bisexual doesn't exist and it kind of messed me up. But you know whatever. And I think this is how it works. You're born at a certain point. That's why you got people like here. Like this is where right here. This is what I called the. This is what I called the conservative line. This is the. This is your Ben Shapiro's. Uh, and your Matt Walsh's, who they're they are they they're actually they're more here, where like they totally could have been gay, but they were conditioned away from it, and that's why they hate gay people so much because they hate the part of themselves that loves cock. That that's this is the this is the conservative line, the CL here, right? Or I also call it cock lover. Okay, this is why Matt Walsh is obsessed with Dylan Mulvaney because he wants it. Um. And if he if he if he if he just acknowledges that Dylan is a girl like she is, then he'll be like, oh, he's 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 too he's too erect. He's creating a third tower. He's afraid of, he's afraid that a plane will crash into him. Sorry, that was inappropriate. Anyway, my point stands. Um, let's just watch this video. Hello, my dears. Welcome back to another video. So you might not. Remember Remember, but a while back when I did my what to times our attractions video, I did make a little brief like statement. Like I made like a passing comment on there saying that maybe in the future I'll do a video discussing why I think there's been a massive rise in um, young people identifying as LGBT plus. Oh, the reason is there's it's twofold. Um, one reason is just because it's more acceptable now, which is a good thing. And so young people are doing are, are identifying and they're exper exploring their you know identity and whatever whatever that's what kids do, uh, or young people do. And then another part of it is that like some of it is performative. Right, some of it, not all of it. At the end of the day, you know, imagine these kids are going to grow out of it. Um, it'll be fine. <laughs> I'm assuming uh, uh, muscle pill is in here because everybody's saying, "Okay, this man is large on the screen." <laughs> okay, what's going on, guys? Um, and those are the two reasons that I would say. At the end of the day, I don't think it's particularly harmful. It might be a little annoying, <laughs> but. Um, so I was going to do a deep dive on it, but then I thought, let me just do a reaction because then through that, I can actually show you what I'm talking about. But before we get into that, I want to spread the word. Okay. I've recently made a new discovery. I am someone who has like really cold feet. This is not a sponsorship. I'm not leading into a sponsor. Me too, because I'm diabetic. I didn't know about this. I didn't know this was a thing. Okay. I'm late to the party. Maybe people already knew about this. Maybe I'm like 10 years late. I have no idea. I was just out and about running some errands and I discovered slipper socks. Just so you know. This is, uh, yes, yeah, I knew Muscle Build was here. Hospital socks. $9.99. Stopping in for the large support. What's going on, brother? Life. I figured. What's going on, man? Um, hospital socks are like A1. My understanding is that people who go to like to mental health hospitals, they get hospital socks, and that's what cures their depression. It's true. It is true. It's true. And my life is just. My life has just been changed. I'm so happy. I can't, I can't, <coughs> can't express to you. It's the little things, you know, it's the little things. I so that. I just feel I like feel now that. that I have a bit of a platform, um, it's my responsibility to raise awareness to the cold feet community. You don't have to have cold feet anymore. Okay. True. There are things Tell out there wife. to help us. All right. <laughs> but anyway, <sighs> what was this? 
video is supposed to Sorry. be about? Oh yeah, um, people identifying as LGBT. So one of my theories as to why we've got a large number of young people in particular, it is a very specific generation who are now identifying a lot as LGBT. Now some people have said this is obviously because society is a lot more open-minded now, society yeah, that's is a lot more it, tolerant, sure. and so people feel more comfortable to identify as what they are, etc. And I do agree that there's truth to that, 100%. You know, back in the day when people were doing things like gay conversion therapies and, and people being potentially like arrested or prosecuted for their sexuality, oh, there definitely true. was a lot of incentives to not beaten stoned stuff like that it's real stuff man especially in other countries it's very regressive countries it does still do that kind of stuff crazy not be open about it and now that those things have been removed start, from western yeah. cultures and western society it has oh. made it possible for people to be more open yes. about these things and so that definitely has been the case however the sudden spike that's been happening in the last few years is very unprecedented and it doesn't really make sense because we've been tolerant what of same-sex couples for a while now and this but the sudden well i just want to be very clear we have not been tolerant of same-sex couples for a while like some places have been more tolerant with laws we're not like i just okay we've been more tolerant i just want to like be explicit about the difference between being more tolerant versus being accepting because we're not still accepting of gay people i think that um part of the problem and it's not like a it's not it's a little bit of a problem but it's not the fault of trans people but is that like as a society, we've moved on from like the gay conversation to the trans conversation, which makes sense to talk about trans people, of course, and their validity. But then like it makes people in society think that like, oh, because we're talking about that, it means that like it's over. Like we always oh, solved it. But it's it's not. There are still people, uh, especially depending on your area, that can feel shame in coming out. Uh, like I said, I live in New York. And, um, you know, I had family say, like, I had one family member tell me that, like, bisexual didn't exist, which was a little upsetting to me when I, you know, you're a young kid and, you know, you, you, you know, you, you're, you're doing your thing. Um, it could be a little upsetting. And that's in New York, right? So, you know, we're still, we're still, we're not 100% there. We're not 100% there. I'm just saying, but I remember in like high school, there were like these girls, especially, who were like, oh, we're lesbian. They start kissing each other. And it's like, what are you doing? You're so weird. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Spike that's happening among young people How big is, this? is kind of out of nowhere. Wow. And I think the reason for that, I'm going to show you with these videos, but one of the biggest reasons I think that's contributing to that, part of it is social contagion. I do think that people are seeing things on social media, which is. I don't like the word social contagion because it sounds so like negative. I just, it just, it's almost like sounds derogatory. Like it's, it sounds like it's a virus. And it's not. It makes it seem like being gay is a plague. I don't like that word. Like saying that there's a social aspect to it, like I acknowledged before, like, yeah, for sure. I think that there are people either exploring or they're just doing it like trending. But to call it a contagion, it has the, you have to understand that it sounds like what you're saying and a lot of people are hearing it. And there's some people who do mean that. And I don't think she does because she's, I like this content creator. She's more conservative, but she's like very, uh, she's very intelligent and respectful. But there are absolutely people that are like the Matt Walsh's of the world that are calling it social contagion because they don't like gay people. And the reason I know they don't like gay people is because they recently were talking about how you, you shouldn't be allowed to be gay. Okay, so we, we I just think that we should be careful about using the word social contagion. It's not a good word or classification saying that there's a social impact for sure. Uh, saying that some of the people identifying you're dishonest for sure. But to call it a social contagion makes it seem like gay people are a fucking virus. And that is absolutely what people like Matt Walsh want you to think. And you can't say they don't want you to think that because they literally go on Joe Rogan saying gay people shouldn't be able to get married. So like it's the, 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 the facts are against you here. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I'm just saying. I really want to be careful about these calling everything a social contagion. I think it's just very dangerous. All right. It's making them think that they are something else. Like, so it's making them think that they are part of the LGBT community, etc. Because what I'm noticing is that sexuality is becoming way more broad than it ever has been. Sure. So That's before, when thing. people used to identify sexuality purely through the lens of biology, we only had three sexualities. You could only be straight, gay, or bisexual. Sure. Because there's only male and female. So you could only be attracted to one, the other, or both. When we looked at sexualities through a biological lens, there was less options. Whereas now what I've noticed is that sexualities are no longer based on biology anymore. Sexualities are based on gender. a ton of other things. And so I'm going to- Well, they're mostly based on like the concept of gender, right? And I know people aren't like all affirming and shit. I had a big conversation about this in my Aiden Ross video. So if you want to see like my whole breakdown on that, you can go watch Aiden Ross's spiraling out of control. And I don't know it's not because he thinks there's only two genders. It's just because of like the incredible cope that he's engaging in. Right. But like there are more than two genders. And here's my general reasoning for it. One, I have non binary friends who are good, genuine people. And so I trust them and their experience. Right. That's number one. Number two, 
I would say that if you look across multiple different societies, they have different genders, which means that there seems to be a trend of different acceptance of different genders and gender expressions across different societies. Three, I don't think it's far out to say if we have the intersex of the body, which is the thing that we have, then there also might be something like intersex of the mind where it comes to like your brain chemistry operates in a way that doesn't make you identify as male or female and maybe in a different capacity. Not that, not that, uh, not that deep, but that's pretty much uh, what I think when it comes down to it. Um, and so I don't really think it matters. Frankly, I don't like labels. So just who cares? Don't even call yourself gay. Just like, you know, whatever makes your dick hard. That's what I say. Um, so like, yeah, it's annoying that labels are getting out of control, but I just like, who cares about labels? You know what I mean? Like whatever, do your thing. Obviously it doesn't really matter. Show you what I'm talking about and then we'll, we'll dive into it a bit more. Yes, I consider myself a sapiosexual. It means like this. sexual attraction. No, stop. Uh, there's Stop. Sapiosexual, blah, 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 blah. Shut up. I'm tired of that stuff. That's annoying, okay? Just be kind of get like you Like, this is people who want to be unique. Oh, I'm a sapiosexual. I, I, my wife's very intelligent, and I find that very sexy. I'm not a sapiosexual, okay? I'm a dog, baby. That's what I could identify as. <laughs> Like that kind of stuff is annoying. And I think that that hijacks these communities because that's that that's not a thing. That's just like I'm really bored and I want to be unique and I'm a, this section. It's like, bro, relax. Like you, you don't have to like and if you want to believe it, like it's just OK. But you don't have to go make TikToks about it. Like it's just it's just identifying as something to, to identify as something. Just put put your wick in whatever you want. Light that candle, baby. Who cares? You know, into intelligence. So the more intelligent a person is, the more I'm turned. That's on. just a preference. It's not gender based, and it doesn't trump the fact that I'm gay. So it doesn't make oh me sapiosexual, God. not gay. It makes me a gay sap sapiosexual. Wow, and incredible. I have been around many women where they're highly intelligent, and I'm turned on, and I'm thinking about what might be able to happen be between, between me and that woman. Uh, I guess you're not gay, bisexual, whatever. Like he's... I stutter because it's... it's like this guy's like coping so hard that he's like, I'm gay, but sometimes I think about women, but I'm not bisexual. It's because I'm a sapiosexual. Bro, why is it? It's not that deep. Like, chill the fuck out, bro. Come not really on. something. It's not my orientation, but it still is there. And this is also why I talk about fluidity and how yeah, it's a loud minority. Are able true. To get in bed with somebody of a different gender that they don't normally do because they might be a All sapiosexual, right, highly attracted and aroused and turned on by the intelligence. And from no. there, they're able to do what they You're want to do in the bedroom okay. with this person. It's okay. And smarts is what turns them on. Smarts. He says within the video, it doesn't erase the fact that he's gay. It does. But a he bit. is also a sapiosexual and has an attraction to people who are intelligent. So so it's really fascinating because it seems like what's happened as well is that because we've changed how we define sexualities it's also meant that some people have almost like dual sexualities so they'll have they, they technically have more than one but this is the kind of stuff that i'm talking about is that sexuality because we're no longer defining it for a biological lens anymore we're, we're defining it yeah i just don't like i think that uh it's I think everybody does it a little bit, but I think it's very easy to take the outlier of a group and promote them as the main part of a group that guy's obviously a fucking um, I don't think that that's like all of LGBTQ people. Um, that is like a general outlier. And I don't like videos that takes outliers and goes, this is the community. Well, I found some idiot on TikTok that's gay that's saying he's a sapiosexual. That's probably all of them. I mean, there are a lot of things. I just, I think that the better conversation is like that person's just like annoying, frankly. I, that's how I would engage with that. Through social factors. The problem with that is that there are limitless social factors so if we start defining sexualities through social factors we will inevitably have endless amounts of sexualities I because suppose. before his attraction would have just simply been understood as a gay man who's who finds intelligence very attractive yeah, that's just like you can be a straight person who finds people who are very athletic very attractive you can find people sure. who are very ambitious very attractive you can find people who are very you know kind and funny very attractive Roughly it doesn't create a new sexuality stuff. though one of the most controversial and misunderstood sexual orientations is demisexuality no dude we would, this demisexual doesn't exist it just means you're attracted you, this is it just means that you, you don't want to fuck somebody till you're in love with them it's not that deep all right you're hot. Stop. It doesn't matter. So let's talk about what demisexuality is and why it's not just a preference. People who are demisexual it's just a preference. only experience it's sexual just attraction preference. once they form a close bond to someone. Now, upon hearing this definition, a lot of people think that's normal. So many people don't sleep with a person they've just met. Yeah. Well, yep. yes, that's, but these people are completely misunderstanding what demisexual is. No, they're not. Is. You are. Sure, lots of people are going to want to be close with someone before they have sex with them, but they still experience sexual attraction. They are still attracted to that person and lots of other people, despite not having sex with Shush. them. Demisexuals do not experience this. 
They are completely asexual. They do not experience sexual attraction at all until they form a close bond with Then they're not asexual. If you have the capacity to develop a sexual bond, you're not asexual. I don't know what you want me to tell you. Um, asexual makes play, makes sense to have because it means that you don't like want to do sex stuffs. But like, stop. This the cope is unreal and it's annoying. Um, it's just annoying. It's unreal, bro. Just stop. Just stop. You're 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 embarrassing us all. Okay, I demisexual doesn't exist. It doesn't. It doesn't exist. It's just a preference. That's all it comes down to. I'm not invalidating. I am invalidating you because if you say that you're a stinky goober, and right, you're annoying, I'm just saying. With someone, and then they start to develop attraction for just that person. Whoa. That's why asexuality is a spectrum, and demisexuality is totally valid. Wow. It's funny because demisexual is one that I'm familiar with. I learned this term years ago on, on the BuzzFeed video, and I actually had a Me conversation too. about this with a friend because they were try trying to convince me that I'm a demisexual because I fit the description of a demisexual to a T. And but my response was, you notice how the person had to go from you're attracted to a tell like the person, not her, not uh, Zena. I think that's how you say it, right? The the other person went for. Oh, we guess we don't know if that person's a girl. <laughs> They went from, oh, it's an attraction to intelligence to, oh, it's not, it's only an attraction to intelligence. Like, they have to keep shifting the goalposts. Originally, demisexual was just an attraction to intelligence. Now, it's you can't get your wee-wee hard until you're, uh, no, sorry, demisexual used to be you're only attracted to people that you develop a bond with. Now, it's, um, now you can't even get horny unless you have a bond with it. It's just a shift of the goalpost. No, that's just my personal. And I guarantee you most of them don't even agree with that definition of the term. Because I, I personally think that demisexuality, I don't think that it's a coincidence either that the vast majority of the people I've seen who say that they're demisexual are female. I don't think that's a coincidence. <sighs> because when you understand female sexuality, There's it makes sense like as to why the vast boob. majority of people who identify... Men like boob, no care about brain, do not care. It's fucking real, honestly, real stuff. I don't care about anything. I don't care about anything. I don't care about your brain power, all right? as demisexuals are female. Demisexuality is the idea that you cannot be sexually aroused by someone who you don't have a connection with. Yeah, that's a lot of people. And that, that is, is not, it's normal. The thing is, I don't have an issue with people creating words to describe things. I actually don't mind these these terms like sapiosexual, demisexual, but I do have issues. Like there's no problem with the, the existence of the word. It's a problem when they're trying to make it like a real sexuality. It's like a fucking star sign. Like it's annoying and it's unnecessary. That's all it comes down to. Okay. She's with claiming that they're sexualities, and I will get to why I, I have an issue with it at the end of the video. I have nothing against people creating labels to describe uh. things that they're feeling or describe the way that they are, but I, I do think that when it comes to sexuality, I do think it can cause problems, particularly for young people. But yeah, I think demisexuality is perfectly normal, mm. very, very common among women, also common among men too, but it does seem, from what I've seen, it's predominantly women who it's identify as demisexual. It's just a preference. And I think it just comes down to the Where's fact that, opinion? yes, women do prefer to have emotional bonds with the people they're sleeping with, and that's perfectly normal. True. That is that is textbook female sexuality. But that that's person's probably non-binary, so and they're probably not even a girl. At all. Growing up asexual means spending the first, like, 15, 20 years of your life not uh, realizing that when someone says yeah. someone is hot, they mean, like, they're sexually attracted to them and not just aesthetic attraction because i'd be like wow that person's hot and i really just meant wow like my eyes they make my brain happy to see them i like how they're dressed I like how their hair is no that's not what people mean it means hot means they make you feel things or you're sexually attracted to them what what again completely normal completely normal it is i call people hot but i don't want to sleep with them and it's kind of just like slang isn't it that's just how you talk if you think someone's attractive just like oh that person's really hot that person's really hot i don't want to sleep with any of these people i just acknowledge the fact that they're beautiful people to look at so far i'm learning that i'm a sapiosexual because i am very attracted <laughs> to intelligence i'm also a demisexual because i've i don't personally like the idea of having intimate moments with someone outside of a committed relationship and i'm also asexual because i can say that people are hot without it meaning i want to sleep with them i'm collecting True. sexuality wow. from pokemon at this point <laughs> Uh, it's kind of true. I do feel like there's a lot of people uh, who just want to be seen as like more unique who will identify as these different things. I really do think it like, boils down to that a lot. Because I can relate to all of these. It's that time again. Let's I go. Thought, yeah, I thought, I thought asexual is just when you didn't want to do sex, right? That's why I'm bisexual. <laughs> Of the omnisexual pride flag. A lot of you have been asking for this one, and I've actually been looking forward drills. to talking about this one. Let's get into this. Omnisexual, often confused with bi, is a sexuality which means that bi. a person has attraction to Lumber. all genders while still having a preference. This pretty much means that they like every gender identity, but have a preference on certain ones. In oh, other this words, is what I'm talking about. This is the problem with COVID, is that when COVID happened, we had too much time to come up with new things. Like, listen, okay? This is what I'm talking about. We never should have gone beyond gay, and we never should have gone beyond trans, okay? <laughs> All right. 
Just you're gay or you're straight. That's it. Oh, well, what if I'm bisexual? You're kind of gay. That's it. We got so we now we're just going spiraling out of control with like all this weird, like all over the place with all this stuff. And it's most of it's just to feel unique. Like it's it, it that's all it comes down to. You know, it's just like it's just a bunch of words to say to somebody. So you guys can jerk off and see who's the most fucking woke person in the entire world. It just gets kind of annoying. Um, uh, what do I want to do? I kind of want to get this. OK, we're good. <laughs> It's omnisexuals are attracted to all genders, but not regardless of gender. Gender can still be a factor in their attraction, unlike pansexuals who don't care about gender. So omnisexual is the attraction to all genders, but with a preference. Based on how it was described in this video, it seems as though omnisexual takes into account gender identities as well. But do you see what I mean though? In that, I think the reason why there's so many different sexualities now is because we are now defining sexualities through social social terms sexuality labels are no longer biological they're defined by social factors but the problem is there are so many social factors so inevitably you are going to have an infinite number of sexualities because if people can make sexualities based on preferring intelligence preferring to have a bond with someone before they sleep with them being able to acknowledge the attractiveness of other people without being sexually attracted to them which are completely normal human behaviors there is nothing abnormal about any of these These are completely normal and very common human behaviors it's just the only difference is people are now giving them labels but the reason why i think this can be confusing is because when you say that these are sexualities as opposed to labels to describe different character traits because really and truly, a lot of these are personality traits, right? Before we would have understood these as personality traits. You have you have a specific type of personality, <sighs> and because okay. of your personality, you prefer these types of people. Pretty but we would not have understood them as sexualities, because we looked at sexuality through biological lens, which is are you same sex <sighs> attracted, opposite sex attracted, or attracted to both sexes? So we only had. Well, listen, I don't think that the the, the introduction of gender has like a, this profoundly negative impact. Um, what is this? I need palms, plenty finer, more porn. Oh, nice. I don't think that there, there's an issue with uh, like different genders or acknowledging the existence of like more genders. I don't think that that makes it that much more confusing. You know, it's that when we get into like this concept, if, like, it makes sense to be attracted to like if sex is, is supposed to be about or your sexual attraction is supposed to be about like you're attracted sexually to it used to be sex. And now with gender, it's a little more complicated, but now it's gender. That's it. That's all it has to be. But now we're getting into pansexual. OK, fucking intelligence isn't a goddamn gender. OK. So it's not that that's, a, that's called a preference. That's not a sexuality. Sexualities. And the thing is, even then, when we only had straight, gay and bi, people were still confused about which one they fit into. I remember young people really going through a lot of distress trying to figure out their sexuality and trying to figure out what they are. I cannot sure. imagine how young people are navigating figuring out who they are today. <sighs> Okay, so with that with that statement, I understand what you're saying because like I think I've, we've all been there. I think of everybody's there. I think young men, is, uh, I think young men have it harder when it comes to dealing with their sexuality because as a society we shame young like the boys for being gay, uh, which is changing. But we don't shame girls. Like you know, for the most part, like it's unfortunately grossly natural for like young people to experiment with each other uh, sexually because they start getting horny younger than you'd want to admit. Um, <clears throat> which is funny because my wife and I had this silly conversation. Maybe I'll include it in this video about, uh, you know, that it was so weird. And like, what would happen if like uh, our kid, like let's say we had a daughter and they brought over like a, a, a boy and they're like, you can't be in the room alone with that boy. And they're like, well, I'm not binary. It's like, how would we deal with that? I was like, oh my God, this is going to be fucking preposterous. My wife, well, maybe I'll add that conversation into this video because it was kind of funny. But, um, I think a lot of the distress didn't just come with not knowing. It does come with not knowing. It's the shame associated with it. And like again, I think we've all been there. I felt a little bit of shame for for my attraction to dudes, right? Uh, when I was younger, and it didn't like make me want to fucking take my own life or anything. But if you're gay and you have that same issue, it's gonna be like a lot worse for you. I don't think that's. I think that like yeah, it's more confusing now, but it's just generally more acceptable. So it's probably it's just gonna be a little different. It's not gonna be. It's like there's like an overwhelming amount of options now, whereas like back then it was just like you were invalidated for having for choosing any option other than fucking like a default uh and default mode. You know, that's where the issue lies in more than anything else. When people do shame girls, I'm not saying people don't shame girls. I'm telling you that from a societal perspective, we shame boys more for being gay than girls. It's an objective fact. Um, like it's not even like really debatable. Um, we do. That doesn't mean that some girls don't get shamed, but guys get shamed for for being gay more than girls get shamed for being gay. In fact, society thinks it's hot. It goes along with the sexualization of women when it comes to like two girls that are kissing and touching stuff. Um, as a society, we're like, oh, that's hot. As a society, two gay men kissing is gross, right? Like that's the societal understanding of these topics. So like, I'm sure women do get shamed, but not nearly as much as young men. Uh, young men get shamed much more for being gay than women or experimenting with their sexuality. So I'm just letting you know, okay?
there's this many options, especially when there's so much overlap with all of the options as well. Like the first guy who was on who said that he was both gay and sapiosexual. So two sexualities, so people can have multiple. It's so, I just think it's confusing personally. Yeah, I, think, it's it's I don't think people do better with fucking... this much choice. I think it creates a lot of confusion because uh... I don't think people want endless choice. I think people like to have the freedom to be able to- That's why we need communism because people don't do well with choice. Based or what, guys? Is that based or what? ...to express themselves, but I don't think when you give people a uh, lot of choice, it makes them better off. I think it actually makes them more distressed and a lot more confused. And so I think the reason why we're seeing so many young people identifying within these LGBT labels is because a lot of these labels that have been created are now broad enough to cover straight people. Like, I could identify as safe <sighs> because I fit the description. I could identify as demisexual because I fit the description. I apparently can also identify as asexual because I fit the description. Could identify as that because there are labels within that community that perfectly describe me, even though I would describe myself as just a regular degular schmegular straight woman. Because Whoa, that's, there is really nothing particularly uh, special a little about me. I know there are tons of kidding. people just like me. These are all very, very normal things and very, very common things. We've decided to give them names, I guess, but that doesn't change the fact uh, that these things have been existing since forever and have always ooh, been a thing, like but we just didn't attribute them to sexuality. Like I said, I have no issue with giving things a label, although I do think we're kind of taking it overboard with the creation of new- Yeah, there's too many labels, but more than that, they're trying to assign them as sexualities instead of preferences. If you want to call yourself sapiosexual as a preference, that's fine, like I don't care. But like saying it's sexuality, it's not, it's a preference. You're not attracted to dumb people. Like, that's it. That's all it really boils down to. Bah, boom. A lot of sapiosexuals in my audience because they're attracted to me. <laughs> New labels these days, I do think it's getting out of hand. So personally, I think we'd be better off creating less labels. But, you know, I understand that this is something that <sighs> adolescents just generally go through. And it's just kind of yeah, part true. of the development process is to go through all these labels and, and be trying to figure out who you are. What you're I blame Pokemon because there's too many, there's too many types and that's what everybody wants to be. They want to be a type of Pokemon now. It's all Pokemon genders, dude. I'm just kidding. Although I will say I do still stand by my Harry Potter argument where like people are identifying as like deerkin now because they can't identify with their Patronus because J.K. Rowling said um, some suspicious stuff. Let's be honest, okay? Oh, that's really cool. I like that. Identity right, is and a little so transphobic, I really understand right? why it's happening, especially with young girls because I think that young girls go through this a lot more and I'm not surprised that a lot of the people who I see discussing this are young women because we are also more prone to social contagion, right? We're more prone to I doing like things because language. we see other people doing things. Um, why are women more prone to social? Why would you even, I, I really just don't even understand that take. How are women more prone to social contagion? Women, I would say it has more to do with the fact that like women are a little bit more emotional and more spiritual. And I'm not saying that in a derogatory way, but I am at the same time, okay? Like who who's popularized is like, um, like, who, like the ones that are, oh my God, this is like fucking ridiculous to kill without any pushback. Um, like the people who really talk the most about um, like star signs and stuff are women. And I think that this does to an extent go along with that for sure. But like, why do you keep, why are women more susceptible to social contagion? That's just like a weird thing to say. Or because our friends are doing it. This is something that's always been the case for young girls. Young girls have always been susceptible to social contagion. Like so I don't think that right any of this is very use. surprising. And right now this is what it's about. Before, when I was younger, it was now it's identity labels in in the next few ah, the, there's a problem with that like when i was younger it was eating disorders and women so now you're bringing eating disorders into the conversation about like uh first of all social contagion it's really is just a shitty word to use but now you're making this more complicated when you talk about like how women are more susceptible to social contagion because now we're talking about eating disorders and women are naturally going to have more eating disorders because when you have a society that values or this is changing every day of course but when you have a society that traditionally values women based on their looks of course women are going to develop more eating disorders it's not a social contagion that's the social influence of overly sexualizing women uh, in a way where like their only value in society is their body, right? So of course you're going to see more women um, have fucking eating disorders because men aren't judged as much on their on, the, on their size as women are, despite the fact that I, men that are over more overweight are less healthy because of the way that fat deposits on their body. So what you're saying is is weird. I think it, a very intelligent person lacking nuance in this topic i don't know why there's this desperation to say that all women are susceptible to social contagion because it's really just like it basically infantilizes women and causes them calls them stupid i would say that like absolutely women are a little more spiritual than men that's where you see like star signs and shit um you know crystals shit like that my wife got me into them so i'm not even i'm not saying it as a negative i'm just saying it as a thing that exists but now you're talking about how women are just dumb and successful to susceptible to things but Eating disorders are naturally going to, like, women are going to gravitate towards those when they're being so heavily judged on their diet and then it causes them to have bad relationships with food or worse than men. Generally speaking, I'm not saying men can't have these issues. I'm just saying that is a little bit of nuance lacking from what you're saying here. Yes, it's going to be something different. It's just kind of the way we are, I guess. The issue with creating. And really quick, I know I have to qualify everything I fucking say. 
Um, like, of course, there are people who are like saying that they have eating disorders when they don't. Like, of course, but like that doesn't make it. Uh, that doesn't mean that everybody that has it is like. There's going to always be people that are going to be like obnoxious and they're going to over identify with stuff when they don't actually have that. But that doesn't make everything a social contagion. What happens is, is something becomes like more widestream or mainstream and popular real issues. And then people falsely identify with it because they want to identify with some level of oppression uh, because people are kind of like losers like that sometimes. Um, and so like, that's that whole thing. Like when I was younger, there's people that are like, yeah, I'm poor. And they thought it was cool to be poor for some reason. I don't know. Like, uh, like cope now, you know? Um, that's what I, I would talk. I would talk about like that would be more like that, um, but not really not social contagion. It's from social factors. Is like I said, you'll have an infinite number of sexualities because there are an infinite number of social factors. So in the process, you are going to confuse a generation of young people because a lot of these overlap. Like I said, I could fi I fit perfectly into all of these. All of those sexualities that they described <laughs> describe me. So so if I was a young person now trying to figure myself out and discover who I am, I would be very confused. I wouldn't know who that. I would be like, oh, that's me. Oh wait. No, that's me. Oh wait, no, that's I would have no idea where I'm going or, or what's going on, to be entirely honest. At this point, people are creating sexualities out of pretty much anything. If you are a, a, a woman who only dates tall men, you can create a sexuality for that. She's not if you're a man who's not attracted to big women, you can create a Basically, you're just a man. <laughs> I mean, you're just a woman because all women are attracted to all men. Sexuality for that. If you're a woman who likes rich guys, you can create a sexuality for that. But that's the reality. No, what I get? People are creating sexualities Damn. from preferences and personality traits. Oh, I got the health one. You that's are inevitably bad. going to have an infinite number of sexuality labels. How young minds that are still developing and trying to find themselves and discover who they are are supposed to navigate that, I honestly have no idea. But that's just it for this video. I would be interested call, to know what your thoughts are. Do let me know in the comments what you think about right. the new sexuality labels sure. and, and what your personal views are on this or on some of the videos that we saw. Let me know if you fit into any of those sexualities that they described as well. And I'd be very interested to see how many of those you fit into. Well, if you like this video, then you may as well like and subscribe. I am also on other social medias if you'd like to check me out. Just has music. music. It's Links pretty good actually. <laughs> it's actually pretty below. good. Thank you very, very much for giving me your time today, and I will see you, ah, you in my next video. Damn, I can't believe that guy fucking came in here and said that. Yo, stop fucking me, bro. I want Papa Gut to pee on my face, but just as a friend, there's nothing weird about that. I want him to pee on my face